of all, I really want to thank you for being part of my community. You are the reason why I do what I do, why I'm always looking for ways of being creative and innovative about bringing new contents. And I also want to celebrate with you today because it's been 10 years since I started my growth journey. And with that, I would love to celebrate by starting to share with you about my growth journey. I want to start sharing the things that I'm constantly learning because I'm not a complete job. But I just want to start sharing that 10 years ago was the first time when I had a personal coach. He was an American and he conducted this famous test, which is known as the Strengths Finder. You probably heard of it. And at the time, he conducted the test and we found out all my strengths, which was really nice to hear, was nice to know. But I also found out about my weaknesses. And honestly, I felt really embarrassed because at the time I had already decided that I wanted to become a coach. And one of the things that really stood out from that test was just the lack of soft skills, people skills, and empathy that I had at the time, which was obviously going to be a huge obstacle for me to be able to be successful in my career. So that was the main reason why I decided to change that. And I later conducted another test, which you probably heard of, which is known as the Myers-Briggs test. And it turned out that it was the same result. And the result was that I was a commander, okay? And um, I wanna share with you, not my strengths, but my weaknesses at the time, because I recently started working with a very young client. He's 11, he's a boy, and he is a very gifted boy with a very developed IQ, who unfortunately wasn't too strong with his own social skills and people skills. And I can relate to him because I was there at one point in my life, and he did so great learning about this, these skills that I had him pretend that it was 10 years ago and I was going to my coach for advice and feedback as to what were the things that I could do better at, right? And so I told him about my weaknesses and I'm gonna share them with you at the moment. So just so you know, this, uh, if you haven't taken the test, it's called the 16 personalities test. You can look it up on Google and you can make your own, like try your own test to see what is the archetype that you fall under. And I am, I was an ENTJ, right? And that stands for the commander personality, which is actually the archetype that Steve Jobs shares. And this is a category of analyst who, analysts people, who are known for being stubborn and dominant, intolerant to people because we tend to be very quick thinking, and we're not very patient with people who are not as quick thinking as us, right? I used to be very impatient with people who I consider not to be quick thinking or who didn't share the same qualities that I shared, which in this case has to do with having firm convictions, having really clear goals. And so that was a huge problem, obviously. Arrogant, right? Sometimes this obsession that we have about our goals and about getting things done and about success really translates into us lacking empathy for others, having considerations for the circumstances that just other people have. And at the same time, you know, not even considering their emotions, not considering their sensitivities. We could be really, really blunt. And that was definitely something I needed help with. Poor handling of emotions, well this same obsessive way of being and wanting to complete goals and leading others would sometimes translate into you know being a little bit too pushy and things like that and you know I, I could be cold and ruthless which was another of the weaknesses. So imagine how was I going to be a successful coach if these were my weaknesses. I mean yes we could be very efficient, we could be strategic minded. minded but we all know that Steve Jobs was known for being cold and ruthless. And yes, maybe he made history and that was good, but we also know how he died, right? And it was cancer. And we know that we are the ones who generate our own illnesses, 
at the same time, right? So if he was wrecking all of his relationships, which is a place where we derive a lot of meaning and significance from, then clearly that must have been part of the reasons that he probably developed his illness, right? So these personalities are intuitive and thinking personality types who are known for their rationality and their intellectual excellence. So I asked this boy for feedback and he definitely started sharing so many insights. It was such a beautiful practice. And he just made me realize in the exercise that I really needed to start considering other people's emotions, their sensitivities, considering their own personal circumstances, not losing my patience at the same time with people who I didn't think to be quick thinkers like myself. Because he, as an example, is an extremely brilliant boy who sometimes needs time to think. And he comes up with amazing, incredible ideas. But if he was, if I was to meet him and he was my student back then, 10 years ago, well, I would probably get really impatient and think of him, look down at him and think that he was probably dumb or something when really he was just thinking, right? And he's a deep thinker. So definitely needed to work a lot on that. And 10 years later, I fall under a complete different category of people who are intuitive, but also feeling personality types, known for their empathy, for being diplomat in their skills, and very passionate about their idealism. Now, that doesn't mean I'm perfect now. It doesn't mean that I have no weaknesses that I don't need to work on. No. Actually, the weaknesses that are part of this new personality have to do with sometimes being overly idealistic, meaning that sometimes we tend to imagine a world that the way it should be and, you know, the values that we share. And we feel that everybody else needs to share the same values that we have. And sometimes that can be a little bit unrealistic, right? So we have to be mindful of, yes, we want to change the world, but we can't do it alone, first of all, and we have to be realistic about our expectations too, right? And another thing would be overly idealistic, right? Which is part of it. It's just that sometimes we have, we're very strong about our own values and principles. For example, in my case, it has to do with truth and justice. And it's a real shock to people like us to find out that other people don't share the same values. And imagine, that can get us in a lot of trouble because obviously not everybody is like us, right? So something I really need to work on because sometimes it really is a shock to me that other people don't share the same values. Another thing is that we can be condescending. I mean, yes, we love to teach and that's all great, but sometimes we can be a little bit pushy with other people. Right, especially when it comes to our knowledge and we're trying to enlighten other people. And that also translates in sometimes other people feeling patronized from us. And we don't intend to. We promise we don't intend to. We were just so passionate about the things that we care about, about our passions, about what's important, about changing the world. And sometimes we come across as patronizing, unfortunately. And that makes us be really intense, right? Too pushy because sometimes people are just not ready to change or sometimes they don't even care about change, right? I was really passionate about making all these changes and moving from being a commander to being a protagonist, which is my new archetype, right? But not everybody has gone through the same challenges and difficulties in life. So not everybody's going to choose the same way. And finally, overly empathetic. Sometimes we can take other people's problems as our own, which can cause us to spread ourselves too thin and unfortunately leave us feeling emotionally and physically exhausted. So my point for you today is, yes, I'm still a work in progress. I'm not a complete job. There are things that I still need to get better at, but it's possible to change your personality just like I was committed to doing that, right? So I hope that serves you today. And I would really love for you to go and check out a personality test to get to know more about yourself. Most importantly, know about your weaknesses because knowing your strengths is good, but developing more strengths is even better. My name is Karina Carlos. Thank you so much again for being part of my community and celebrate with me change. 
I'd love to hear about the changes that you are working on.